Initially, <clears throat> when I was at, um, when I first got to Stanford, prior to that, I had been with Ed Catmull out at New York Institute of Technology. Out in Long Island. On Long Island. So Ed Catmull's there holding court there. In, yeah. in Long Island. And so I had been frustrated being an academic at the University of California at Santa Cruz. I quit and got in touch with Ed and said, I'd like to come out and work on capture, capture system, motion capture system. So I was out there building a scanning LED-based motion capture system so they could, as, as eventually developed, so they could do animation. Right. Uh, uh, recording human body movements and having those mapped on animated characters. So I was working on that, and then I got fired uh, by uh, the head of New York Institute of Technology. And almost simultaneously with that, Ed and Albie Ray Smith took a job at Pixar. What did you get fired for? I wonder, did you show up on time? Were you no, no, it's, your it's, it's a long attitude? story. It was basically, I, the guy was a bit nuts. Well, it had to be. To, to, no, he was, he was. He was certifiable. I believe certifiable and nuts. Okay. I mean, he was kind of like Khrushchev. You know, he'd come in yeah. and beat his, beat his shoe on the wall and really? yell at people. And so I just. he was out of control. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, he was, he was a little bit out of control. Yeah. So I, I ended up writing a letter to look for a job ah. to, with someplace else. Right. But I used the local, uh, 10, I mean, a PDP-10 huh. to do it, a word processing system to do it, printed it on the local printer, deleted the file. He had a guy snooping on everyone, oh. and he saw my letter. He came in, presented it on my desk, and said, and he, he demanded my resignation. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. Because I had looking for another job, and in it I said, this guy is too irrational for me to remain here. Oh, yeah. And so he was very so he was upset. Like, hey, I'm so, so he irrational. So fired me. And I came out to California, yeah. and that's when I got a job at Stanford. <laughs> it's kind of like throwing it in the briar patch. You know? Right. What was uh, Stanford like in the uh, early 80s then? Um, we, the first summer I was here uh, at, at Stanford, I went up to Xerox Park, and Lynn Conway and, and um, Carver Mead were running a... Um, class on how to design integrated circuits and I was a hardware designer and a software person so I just I learned in that summer how to design integrated circuits and then I decided I was going to build this thing called a geometry engine I devised an architecture that would allow high, highly parallel computation uh, kind of the earliest forms of GPUs right. and um, um, I designed that and eventually uh, a few students, seven students, and I decided to leave Stanford. And I had the idea I wanted to bring 3D graphics to the masses. So, right. and by the way, most of NVIDIA people who have brought truly managed to achieve that are ex Silicon Graphics people. Yeah, I was about to make that uh, arc of history, which is the GPU is the driving force right now in Silicon Valley for self driving cars. Mining of cryptocurrency, yep, yep. and well, it's just a, it's a highly parallel system, very inexpensive, lots of concentrated GPUs, uh, graphics programming units, but they're all really just arithmetic units able to do floating point arithmetic right. and be programmed. And Nvidia has been insightful enough to create a programming system that makes it easier to do, and they've become essential to neural networks and all of these. You know, modern AI is based on programming GPUs in parallel and doing neural networks. So so AI, computer vision, all of this stuff wouldn't exist without the GPU and the work that started back in the SGI days. Yeah, the way, it, the way it's constituted today, that's true. I want to first thank my friend Scott Walker for supporting startups, not just supporting This Week in Startups, but startups themselves. Walker Corporate Law, as you know, is a boutique law firm that specializes in the representation of entrepreneurs and startups. That's what they do. And they encourage fixed fees. What's that? They give you a fixed price. You know what you're going to pay to do your startup financing, to do your corporate formation, to do your trademarks, to do whatever you need to do, employee stock option plan, licensing, mergers, acquisitions, terms of service, privacy policy, all those things that are check boxes for your startup. They do uh, with lawyers that have decades of experience, 10, 20 years, no junior associates getting on the job training, and they specialize in startups. That's why they're so good at it. That's why they can give you fixed fees, and they're really in it for the right reason. Scott Walker comes to all of our events. He's a real true mensch, and he spends a lot of time talking to founders, and you can call him directly right now, 415 415- 
979-9998. 415, that's San Francisco, 979-9998. Or you can email them, scott at walkercorporatelaw.com. Scott at walkercorporatelaw.com. Or visit walkercorporatelaw.com. Scott's a great guy. Tell him your Uncle Jason sent you, and he'll take care of you. Okay, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. 